Hello everyone, we're Hi. back <laughs> with our YouTube that we hope you're all tuning into for Where Nutritious Meets Delicious. She's nutritious <laughs> so tonight we're talking about um, all kinds of sauces and rubs. We just had this cooking class and it was very successful. So everybody wants to know how do we take that chicken and that fish recipe and make it into something dynamic and something that is uh, has has culinary taste and is not boring. So we have what a bunch of different rubs that we've created and some sauces and you're gonna you're gonna tell us how we're gonna turn that into something delicious. Yes, while well, you tell us I'm, why it's nutritious. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, so a couple years ago somebody made a comment to me about chicken is the khaki pants of the culinary world. And I sat there and I thought about that. I'm like, you know, that's kind of the perfect metaphor. It's like the little black dress of just of cuisine. It's there, it's constant, it's bland, it's stable, can be a little boring after a while. So we're going to show you how to dress up your khaki pants. All right. That was me before you, honey. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so just in the world of chicken, pork, beef, fish, vegetables, whatever you want to do, here's some easy ideas that you can make in bulk to make all these things more exciting and have a different, have the same protein a different way every time. So the first one we're gonna start with is spices and rubs. And I call them spices and rubs because they're spices and you can rub them on meat so you can use them with a little bit of olive oil or you can blend them into butter like I'm gonna show you. So uh, the three that we have, we have a Southwest spice, we have a Cajun spice, and we have a Middle Eastern spice. Now, if you look at them, they all look the same. And honestly, the basis for these are very similar because the nutrition qualities for a lot of the bases are very similar. Mm -hmm. Paprika, salt, black pepper, garlic powder. Uh, those are a lot of your bases, maybe some onion powder. Uh, and then you, we vary as we change our flavor profile. So you wanna maybe give a quick bit on uh, pepper and Himalayan sure. pink salt, paprika. So the base that you're talking about in all of them is um, actually lots of great health benefits. For instance, black pepper. Um, we think of using black pepper all the time, but the peppercorn outer layer of the black pepper actually is an essential oil, and it helps with our metabolism. It helps with uh, burning fat uh, it could, because it raises, it gives our body heat, and so it also helps us detoxify. So when you raise the heat of the body, your body detoxifies. Um, ginger, you mentioned, are in all three profiles. Ginger um, is great for nausea. It's also good for digestion. It helps us digest our food. So ginger is in all of them. And then what was the next Cayenne. One? Cayenne. Oh, yes. Cayenne pepper. So that is the, you have to help me say it. Cap Capsaicin. Capsaicin. I have trouble with that word. Capsaicin is very important for, it helps with wound healing. A lot of times if you go to the pharmacy and you have a burn, you can get the capsaicin cream and put it on and it helps with wound healing um, and immune system so those are some great things to start with and all of your rubs that give you the basis of a good nutrient profile also one other thing that we talked about that we covered in an earlier episode but the difference between kosher salt sea salt and himalayan pink salt mm -hmm. uh, most culinarians prefer sea salt it's a natural salt that they skim off the top of salt water but can i prefer himalayan pink salt and yes. why well, Himalayan pink salt has a lot of minerals. It's really good uh, for, for keeping your electrolytes balanced, to keep your magnesium up. It helps with leg cramps. It helps you go to sleep at night. And a lot of us are deficient in those key minerals. So if you just take a pinch of Himalayan pink salt and put it in your water, you can keep your body hydrated. I always tell athletes that um, instead of going and getting the Gatorade, which is full of sugar, to put a pinch of uh, Himalayan pink salt in their water while they're traveling. Alright, so for these three that we have, those are the bases. Uh, as we start with the Southwest rub, Southwest, uh, Southwest parts of America where chili peppers are very abundant. Uh, you've got some chipotle chili powder, some ancho chili powder, some cumin or uh, comino, which is uh, native to, um, very big in, in Mexican food, which is right there on the border of Arizona and New Mexico, all those Southwest flavors. So a lot of uh, chili powder uh, and cumin in this one. 
And the middle one, our Cajun. This is where we get into the, the little spicier, a little bit more paprika. Cajun, back in the 80s, I believe it was, Chef Paul Perdome at the Commander's Palace uh, came up with uh, blackened redfish. That was his signature dish. And he almost in, basically invented blackening. And you take paprika and any type of Cajun seasoning or blackening seasoning that you find at the store, probably with his name on it, uh, put it in a cast iron skillet with some butter and some oil, and you're, you're, you're not necessarily, you're burning, but you're not burning. You're burning to the point of crusting, but not burning to the point of charred We're and bitter. carcinogenic. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then the last one they have here, the Middle Eastern spice. A lot of West East Indies spices are very good for you. Cinnamon, yes. nutmeg, cardamom, curry, turmeric. And just so you know, curry is actually a blend that starts with turmeric, and then you can add cinnamon, you can add umpteen different things to get yellow curry, red curry, green curry, they're all different. Yes. Um, and the difference, when we talk about this one, I talked about cinnamon, I talked about nutmeg, both of which are very good. Folks, the difference between the cinnamon that you get at the dollar store and the $9 cinnamon that you get at the, big difference. At, at the, at the gourmet food store, big difference. Big difference. This yeah. one here, you might as well just take sawdust, sprinkle some cinnamon on it, put it in a jar. This one is actually from the bark of the cinnamon tree that's been grated down. It's fresh, it's all natural, it's 100%. Which has so, more of the health benefits, a lot more, like blood sugar, it helps with um, AIDS and digestion, it helps, it's a brain tonic. Both nutmeg and cinnamon, if they're used the right way, can be a brain tonic so they can keep your brain from um, aging. And just like a lot of things that we talk about in our cooking shows about quality for your life, we're not just plugging a certain brand, we're not just plugging a certain thing, but yeah. the difference between the, the the bottom shelf apple cider vinegar that you get and the Bragg's apple cider vinegar that you did that you my get is just right <laughs> is miles and miles of difference. Yes. So yeah. so when when you're shopping for these spices and, and vinegars, spend the extra dollar because you're getting a lot more than just the extra dollar's worth. Okay. So what we've done with these spices is we have just a uh, uh, chicken leg and thigh here that we've rubbed with the Middle Eastern spice. Rubbed it, a little bit of olive oil, roasted. I'm a big fan of roasting at high heat first, that way you get crispy skin. And then you can turn the oven down just to finish cooking the chicken until it's done. But if you're cooking at a medium temperature, then you're really more drying out the chicken, I feel, uh, until you get to, you know, your, your specific doneness. So that's what we've done here. Uh, for the uh, Cajun spice, we've rubbed some uh, pork tenderloin. Just we bought the, the the really thin. If you're in a pinch and dinner's in five minutes and you got to get the kids fed and off to whatever practice or rehearsal, um, you can find a lot of stores. Chicken and pork both cut from Milanese, even beef. It's cut about that thin. Dust it on both sides. Sear, sear on a really hot pan, and you're done. You don't have to wait for it to cook all the way through because it's about a quarter inch thick. So. You're pretty much done after that. So we've just rubbed it with the uh, Cajun rub and good to go. I like the way you put the, the dry herbs on top too. The, is that tarragon? This is thyme. Oh, thyme. Okay, so again, we're using another spice that has lots of nutrient uh, benefits, high in the minerals and vitamins, good for you. So you're using all of these things to just take this regular piece of meat and you're, you're making it full of all this healthy stuff that we can actually get to feed ourselves. I That's exciting. That. Tell the family that, hey, we're going to New Orleans tonight, as opposed yeah. to, hey, here's some salt and pepper on your on your meat. Exactly. So finally, this last one here, well, we're going to our regular basic marinade. This steak has been marinated overnight in the refrigerator, brought up to room temperature, uh, seared in the pan. And then what we've done is we've taken our Southwest seasoning and we've mixed it with a little bit of butter. So right on top there, we've got a Southwest butter. Ooh. Now, if the steak was you know, right off the right out of the pan onto the plate while it's resting, put the butter on the butter melts, so you get the butter and all the southwest seasoning all over the steak. Yum. So you've just taken the southwest rub and made it into a, a butter to give it some get the butter soft, put the seasoning into the butter, so now you have a flavored butter. Okay. And you can put it on toast if you want. Ooh. Steak, chicken, pork chops, uh, shrimp. I like the way you uh, help us think outside the box because I would never think of that. That's great. All right. All right. So moving on to something else here. Now we're going to go to our, our two dressings and marinades. The first one we have is just is a basic marinade. When I say basic, this you can marinate chicken, beef, pork, fish, shrimp, basic marinade. It's 
olive oil, it's lemon juice, it's a little bit of turmeric, it's garlic, it's parsley, it's paprika, it's uh, salt, pepper, and cayenne. All the things that are really good for your digestive system. Yes. And, and they're in there for your digestive system, but they're also in there for flavor. Uh, there's also lemon juice in it, because when you marinate with lemon juice, that little bit of acid starts helping to break down the meat, so it's a lot more tender when you go to cook. Same thing as if you were to add a vinegar to it, which actually this marinade has a little bit of Bragg's apple cider Bragg's. vinegar in it. Yeah, so, well, a couple things you said. First of all, the lemon is a detoxifier. I love using lemon, and um, olive oil actually is an oleic oil. It's an essential fatty acid we don't make on our own, and it's very, very important for our brain health. And what I'm finding in a lot of lab testing that I'm doing, where we look at the micronutrients inside the cell, we're seeing a lot of oleic acid deficiencies. So just adding olive oil um, is, is such a great idea. And then you know how I love Bragg's. Everybody Bragg's. loves Bragg's. Yes, but you have to make sure that it's the organic, raw, unfiltered. So the one that has the the mom on it, and it's called Bragg's apple cider vinegar. It's high in potassium, it's high in minerals, it helps with digestion, it's actually a fat emulsifier, so it helps your body lose body fat. In fact, in my weight loss program, I have everybody take Bragg's apple cider vinegar every day and make it into a dressing, so. Speaking yeah. of dressings, I said this was olive oil, I said it was an acid from uh, lemon juice or Bragg's apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. I said it was spices, I said it was salt and pepper, Sounds like a vinaigrette to me. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. take this and use it as a marinade or just toss it as a... In a salad. In a salad. Or with, and we're back and so we've been talking about the Bragg's apple cider vinegar and how you made that into, it could be a, um, a sauce or even a salad dressing. We or talking, a marinade yes. or a body rub or... <laughs> Bragg's apple cider is a cure-all. We talked about that before. So yeah. make sure you have plenty on hand because a lot of times you go to the grocery store they're pretty much sold out, so get your hands on the big bottles if you can. Or I'm not direct. big on cure-alls, but if I had to have something that you could buy that was not expensive, that you could get your hands on, Bragg's apple cider vinegar. It's really good for acid reflux as well, so yeah. All right, so the next dressing and marinade that we're going to go to is something that I find a lot of home cooks struggle with, and that's Asian food or Pan-Asian food or Pacific Rim or you know, what, whatever is hot right now, it used to be Chinese and then Japanese and then Thai, Thai and then Korean yeah. and now Filipino street food is a big thing. But they all have a lot of things in common. Right. Um, ginger. Okay. Soy. Rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. Some type of heat. Uh, salt. White pepper. And then they all have their, their different plays on some... Uh, ingredients that are uh, indigenous to their culture. Mm -hmm. But so we're going to do just a, a plain, simple, old school uh, Asian marinade slash dressing. Okay. So ours is just sesame oil, rice vinegar, mm -hmm. and we use, instead of soy sauce, we actually use Bragg's liquid aminos. Yes. And Kay, tell me about Bragg's liquid aminos. Well, you can get the liquid aminos in coconut, or they do have soy, but it's a fermented soy. It's a non-GMO soy. And for those of you out there that have gluten sensitivities, gluten is in soy sauce. So when you use the liquid aminos, not only are you getting a good dose of amino acids, which is your proteins, which are very important for your, cellu your cellular health, um, it's also good for um, providing the, the taste of soy sauce without that gluten component. So it can really give you that Asian style that we're looking for. And then the last ingredient is fresh ginger. And this is what ginger looks like at the grocery store. If you ever see it, it looks kind of funky. Uh, but that's what also it looks like on the inside. And ginger is super huge for your digestive system. Okay, take it away. Well, nausea, we talked about it earlier. Nausea, digestion. But I always laugh when I go to the store with, with uh, Andrew because he always takes the ginger and, and picks the little pieces off. And, and I didn't know you could do that. So well, you don't have to get this big, huge piece of ginger. If you just need a little bit, you can actually uh, take a little bit. Right? Yeah, I'm sure the produce manager frowns upon it, but he'll get it. <laughs> so anyway, so what I've done with this, this Asian marinade, like I said, it's, just, it's a simple uh, sesame soy or sesame Bragg's amino with some uh, scallions and some rice vinegar. Uh, some fresh ginger, and we marinated, our, whoops, excuse me, <laughs> marinated our salmon filet in it, and then the salmon filet just went straight into a hot pan and into the oven. So that way you get your skin crispy on the bottom, get your fish cooked, and folks, I'd say when it comes to fish and any of these things, undercooked is better than overcooked. There's nothing worse than 
a dry protein. And you can always cook it more, but you can't cook it less. Remember that? Yeah. So anyway, so what we've done here is just, we've marinated the salmon overnight, put it right in the oven, and this, this uh, Bragg's amino and soy and sesame, it starts to caramelize around the fish as it, as it cooks at a really high heat. So you almost get like this savory, salty, sweet crust around your yeah. fish. And if yes. you want when you're done, then you can just kind of do a little more over the top. And you know, first of all, salmon, we need to make sure that we're getting wild caught salmon at the grocery store. That's very important because a lot of the salmon out there is going to have a lot of toxicity. It's going to have, um, you know, mercury and all kinds of things that aren't good for us. The wild caught salmon is going to be high in those essential fatty acids we don't make on our own. And yes, I love because I could eat salmon every day, but it gets quite boring. Salmon, salmon, and salmon. So this Asian sauce gives it a really nice flavor. Also on your salmon, Kay talked about, uh, uh, what did I talk about? Yeah, what you just talked about. You might well, essential fatty acids. Yes, but, <laughs> but, but the salmon that you get at the store is just like the, the cinnamon, okay? okay yes. You want Alaskan salmon, you want cold water salmon because the colder the water, the fatter the fish, right. and the fat is where all the omega-3s are. Yeah. Now, also, if you you get to the to the store and you see this steelhead trout, and it looks just like salmon, yes. well, there's a reason for that, folks. Salmon is a member of the trout family. You taught me that. Yes. Steelhead trout, Alaskan salmon, just make sure it's a cold water pink fish. Yes. Plenty of fats, and you're good to go. It's almost like getting a well-marbled steak. Right. It's fish. Exactly. All right. Yeah. All right, and so finally on to our last trio down here is we're going to go into uh, uh, sauces. My favorite. Which could also be rubs, which could also be marinades. And again, like the spices, the bases are, are mostly the same. There's garlic, there's some heat, there's olive oil, there's uh, a lot of fresh herbs. Tarragon, sage, basil, parsley. Uh, what else do we have going on over here? Chives, thyme. A lot of those are in a lot of these, uh, but there's just different variations. But either way, you're getting fresh herbs, olive oil, uh, and, and just really good flavors. So I always say, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And so rather than taking a ton of supplements and um, making sure that we do get a variety in our diet, but using these sauces and rubs where we're getting these natural you know, garlic is such an, it's an antimicrobial, antiviral. It fights off disease, it fights off plaque, it helps with heart disease. So just by using these spices and rubs, we can be naturally feeding our cells without having to take a handful of, of supplements all the time. Right, all right, so let's go through them kind of real quick. So the first one is a pesto. The traditional pesto in Italy is basil, parsley, garlic, Parmesan cheese, pine nuts, and olive oil. Now, that's kind of your basic. Now, when you go to the store and you go to look for pine nuts and they're $25 a pound, you're like, oh my God. Well, folks, it's almost like a matrix for pesto. You can have basil and parsley and pine nuts and Parmesan. You can have cilantro and parsley and walnuts and pistachios. You can have mint and parsley and walnuts and... I never thought about that. And, you know, uh, Asiago cheese, uh -huh. a hard cheese, a nut, okay. an herb, parsley, and an oil. It could be olive oil, it could be avocado oil, it could be walnut oil, it could be hazelnut oil. Which switches it up so it's not the same all the time. Exactly. Yes. So our next one is going to be a salsa verde. Now salsa verde obviously just okay. translates to green sauce. Now this green sauce is about seven or eight different herbs. This is kind of where you, where you take all those semi-dead herbs in your refrigerator, just throw them all in a blender, Parsley, thyme, that you know, you bought that whole pack of tarragon for one recipe and you've got like all that left, don't know what to do with it. So that's in here. Sight, sage is in here, thyme is in here, cilantro is in here. But for most salsa verdes, what we have in here also is we have capers and we have anchovies. Mm -hmm. Canned anchovies, fresh anchovies, anchovies like salmon, like we we're talking about, cold water fish, full Smaller of, fish, so you're not gonna get full of great mercury. fats. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Full of great fats and capers. Gives you that little bit of earthy salty and a lot of them, well, I don't really like capers and, well, capers are a pickled hyacinth bud. So if people ever tell you eat your flowers, this is eating your flowers. So. Okay. I love salsa verde on steak, like a, a skirt steak, my favorite. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm with you. But like I said, it's a very loose term, a lot of greens, a little bit of capers, a little bit of anchovies, some olive oil, garlic, good to go. 
Now, the last one we have is chimichurri. Chimichurri has been referred to as the ketchup of South America. Yes. When you order French fries or whatever at a restaurant, this is this is what you get. This is this comes in a bowl, pretty much standard at every table. All right, and this is herbs, chili flakes, olive oil, uh, some type of heat. This one's got red chili flakes in it. Sometimes it's got an acid, whether it's red wine vinegar, lemon juice, uh, lime juice. But that's the, so the, the basis for all these are the same. But the benefits on this one, you get the heat and you get the acid and you get the garlic. Whereas the other one, you get the herbs and you get the, the anchovies and the capers. And the other ones, you get the hard cheese, whether it's Parmesan right. or Asiago, and you get you know your healthy nuts. You can do an almond Parmesan, walnut Parmesan. Right. So kind of depending on the, the flavor profiles, they all have their advantages. The heat is going to again help with digestion. It's going to break those fat cells down. It's going to create heat in the body. It's also going to detoxify. So and have help you to have proper elimination. So. Yeah. So, so this is what we have for you tonight, just a, a basic starting lineup if you want to stock your fridge with things that can make anything you buy taste better. Yeah. So if you, well we have all the full recipes for all of these rubs and sauces and marinades uh, available at nutritiousmeatsdelicious at gmail.com. Yes, yes, so you can ask us any questions, either nutrition questions or Culinary questions. Culinary questions. Take, yes. take me on as your personal chef and just ask away. <laughs> so, all right. Well, this is fun. Do I get to eat this now? Yes. Am I on a date with my husband? Hey, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll chat on this when we get done. And catch us next week as we save the world one, one bite, bite at, at a time. time. And don't forget to subscribe. Like, subscribe. Sorry, <laughs> like and share his Facebook. <laughs>